Today's scripture reading is Luke 10, 25-29. On one occasion, an expert in law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Well, saints, it's good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. It's good to be home and worshiping with you. Um, today we hear the story about a guy wanting to know how to inherit eternal life. But I think the story goes much deeper than that. Because if you read the rest of the story, you hear Jesus talking about this story about the Good Samaritan. And this, the story of the Good Samaritan is an amazing story of the other. And it's a story, too, I believe, of putting ourselves in the place of the one being vulnerable. You know, in seminary they teach you to uh, dissect the text and uh, read it frontwards and backwards and who wrote it, why, when, what was going on, and then apply it. Well, there's a lot going on in our world, amen? amen. And I think to do justice for this text is that we must put ourselves in the story of the vulnerable one, the one that's beaten, the one that's been left for dead. Oh, but we like to be the Samaritan in the story. That's usually what preachers preach about being the good Samaritan, the one that comes in and saves the day. The ones that the others overlooked. But I would say just to us this morning that if we put ourselves in the place of the one that is beaten, the one that is beaten down, the one that is left for dead, that it can have a better impact on us and the world around us. To inherit eternal life, you have to be about love. You have to be about love. And you can't let other people steal your joy. Amen. You can't allow the systems of oppression to steal your joy. And we know, if we're honest, that we live in a place where there is systems of oppression, systems of racism, systems of lots of isms. And yet, and yet, we must rise above it and not let that steal our joy. Because God has placed us here for such a time as this. At conference we heard the story of Queen Esther. And if you know the story, she went to stand up for her people. She could have died. We must stand up for one another. I said this morning in discipleship, there's no them, only us. So many times society tries to tear us apart with all the stuff. We must learn to be better with one another. And the only way, I said, saints, the only way that I think that we are able to accomplish that is if we stay together. If we learn from one another. And don't assume 
You know what they say about assuming. <laughs> Don't assume that we know how it feels to be the other. Jesus tells us that we're to love God first and then to love our neighbor. It struck me as I was thinking about this yesterday, the question that he asked, well, who's my neighbor? I thought, well, gosh, <laughs> doesn't he know? <laughs> doesn't he know? But then I thought a little bit longer about it. Who's my neighbor? Maybe we don't know. But we ought to know. Yeah. Come on now. Our neighbor. We ought to know the struggles that our neighbors are facing. And I'm not talking about the person who has the odd or even number of address that's living on the same street as you. talking about the other. And if we're the ones in the gutter, if we're the one that have been beaten, if we're the one looking for help, if we're the one left for dead, don't we think that we want someone to come along and help us? Amen. If I seem a little upset, <laughs> I am. <laughs> My heart is sick of the violence. My heart is sick of the violence in our world. My heart is sick that some people say have the right to power over others. That some people think that they are superior and have the right just because the color of their skin. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? I'm tired of the fear-based people who think that the color of your skin makes you not a neighbor. I'm tired of the power over. And saints, I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. Amen. And so what I would suggest to us is that we have to do our own work. We have to do the work. And it's work. If we tell our truth, we know that it's work. And if you don't think there's work to be done, then I suggest that you are living in some kind of white privileged denial. Hosea 6.6 6 tells us, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. God is a God of mercy. Thank God for that. Because the mercy is extended to all of us, to you and to I. It seems like this very familiar story is about wanting to know about what's next, but it's also about compassion. It's also about com compassion, even for people we may not want to treat well. A nice little story with a nice little moral, especially for those of us who like to do good deeds. For the needy. We brag about the things that we do. There's nothing wrong with being, being people of action. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I think that we, we have to have our stomach churning, our hearts beating fast. We need to get moving into something that's going to make a difference. instead of just placing ourselves in the story as the Good Samaritan. Placing ourselves in the story 
is the one who's vulnerable. Is the one who's vulnerable. I don't know about you, but you know, I know what it feels like to to live in looking living in the gutter, so to speak. My life of recovery and what that feels like. But I don't pretend to know the rest of the story. I don't pretend to know what it feels like as an African American person getting in an elevator and people walking to the other side of the elevator, or as Pam said, get out of the elevator. I don't pretend to know what it feels like to be shopping and having someone follow you because of the color of your skin. I don't pretend to know what it feels like to be driving and to be pulled over, as Heather said, for no reason. I don't pretend to understand that. What I do hope is that I will come alongside with compassion and not be a part of the problem. That's right. Yeah. Bernard Banquet Scott said, not just individuals have to cross the line, but communities have to cross the line. You see, it's not about me, but it is about us. It's about us as a community willing to take the stand and willing to cross the line together, willing to stand up together, willing to go out together, willing to do what it takes together. Because, you know, the saying, it takes a village. It's going to take us, church. Because you know what I know about MCC and what I know about Valley Ministries is that if we don't do it, who will? That's right. If we don't do it, who will? Who will come alongside the Pride Center and stand with you, Penny? Who else is going to do it? I'm with you. I'm with you. Who's going to do it when... When pack people and congregations together plan a march, who's going to go? When it's predominantly African American churches and people that are impacted, us white folk need to show up. Just saying, we need to show up. And listen. Listen. Yes. Listen. I know this isn't the words that I want to say. It's the God that's speaking this morning. We have to cross the line together. You know, and it, it is it reminds me that crossing the line always begins first with the Samaritan whose heart is moving. Such people are <clears throat> they initiate the change within us. And I know, you know, some people will get pissed off at this. And that's all right. That's all right. If, and if it makes you mad, then maybe there's something to look at. Hallelujah. <laughs> We are called saints to make a difference. We are called to be something more. The Samaritan doesn't let the law or fear or the knowledge that he is hated keep him from what Cain Hopefeller calls the higher righteousness. The higher righteousness. Jesus calls us repeatedly to higher righteousness. That means all of us, together, into walking into this higher place of righteousness. At, at what point do we, is it, the, the scale's going to tip so that we can come to understand there's no them, only us. Who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor?
I pray that our quest for God's love can move us in a direction that is helpful and not hurtful. I pray that we can get out of our own way and address our own issues so that we can be God's hands and God's feet. That we can bring hope to the hurting. I pray that we can bring compassion and mercy and not judgment and fear. Because judgment and fear will bind you up all the time. Amen? Amen. That judgment and fear is something that the enemy, a tool of the enemy that the enemy likes to use to get us off track. So if you're operating in fear, I want to tell you, perfect love. Yeah. The love of God. Cast out fear. I want to leave you this morning with a quote from Mother Teresa. Love that, Mother Teresa. <laughs> she says, if we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. If we have no peace, it's because we've forgotten we belong to each other. I pray that you know my heart this morning, saints. And this is not a lecture, but a, a call for us to step up. A call for us to be something more. A call for us to address our own isms so that we can make a difference. So that we can make a difference and come alongside with one another in the things that God is doing in us. Help us, God, to be the people that you are calling us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen.